before we get to autoacoustic emissions, I want to uh, stress one more point, which is that the outer hair cells produce amplification through essentially a, ver a, a, a uh, through resonance matching. So let's understand what that means. Uh, I think you all have seen the uh, videos or recreations of a, of a, um, a soprano singing at a very high note and bursting a, uh, a, um, a, a wine glass. Uh, we, we actually spent some amount of time trying to reproduce this. It, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Okay, so um, in any case, what that does is, is every object has, a, has its own uh, resonant frequency. And if you feed in energy in at that res resonant frequency, it will take off. It, instead of damping down, it increases in, um, in, in amplitude. And so now you've got this shake, 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 shake until it's shaking too much and it bursts. What's another example of that? A uh, car that's playing a very low bass, that's at the resonant frequency of the car itself. And that's why the, sh the door shakes. Um, another example of it, happens on bridges. Bridges have a resonant frequency. And uh, there was a bridge that you, I, I'm sure you all have seen this video, where the wind was at the resonant frequency of the bridge. And it started to sway. And then it started to sway more and more because the wind perfectly matched the resonant frequency of the bridge until it swayed too much and collapsed. Now, this is also a problem that uh, military uh, that's been known to the military for, for hundreds of years. So uh, originally, uh, soldiers would, would walk across bridges. They would be walking in, they would be marching in step. And if they hit the resonant frequency of the bridge, it would do the same thing as the wind. The, the, you would get this swaying until the, the bridge would collapse. It didn't take too many times before the military decided that as one crosses a bridge, you go out of step. Um, how do we prevent our bridges from collapsing? In general, we make them so that they have dampers and we try to uh, make their resonant frequency not something that naturally occurs in wind. Um, so in this, in the cochlea, the resonant frequency is, differs across the length of the cochlear duct. The resonant frequency is highest at the base of the cochlear duct and lowest out here. So what the outer hair cell is doing is it's, it's amplifying, it has, um, it has as its, uh, it, when it receives um, a sound at the resonant frequency, that's what it's amplifying. So it's, it's amplifying just this little piece of, of the cochlea. Okay, and that in that way it can, you can distinguish 500 from 502 hertz. Okay, so now we're ready to understand autoacoustic em emissions. Let's start with the outer hair cells uh, vibrating. So we're just gonna we're gonna do a a a, a, a um, thought experiment. We're gonna say we zap this, and we've got these outer hair cells going. Well, that is going to move the, the membrane in the cochlear duct up and down. So the, res, the, uh, the effect of that, when the outer hair cells move up and down, that's going to send, if it, if it really moves this membrane, which it does because it's at the resonant frequency at that place in the, in the cochlea, it's going to send a fluid wave out the, uh, out the window here. And out the oval window. Well, as this moves, because the outer hair cells are moving, well, that's going to move the stapes back and forth, and then the incus, and then the malleus. And the malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane. So now, now what happens? The tympanic membrane moves back and forth. And that's essentially just like it's just the same as a woofer going off. And so now what you do is you put a little microphone into the ear canal, and you listen for that. Um, you listen for that sound that's being produced by the sound coming back. That's an autoacoustic emission. Now, how do we get that to occur without zapping the outer hair cells, which we can't do? 
So how we get it to occur is we play a sound in. All right, if I play a 10 kilohertz sound in here, I should get a vibration here that if I'm listening will send me, will just go right back out and I can hear the autoacoustic emission at that same frequency. In this way, you can test a baby. You can see, does the baby have hearing at these, do they, do they have the uh, sensory, uh, the conductive and sensory components at different frequencies. You can play in different frequencies and make sure that you get back those different frequencies uh, from the microphone in, in your, uh, in, that you place in the, in the ear canal. Now, what does it not tell you? It does not tell you if the inner hair cell to spiral ganglion neuron synapse is working. It does tell you that the outer hair cell is working. And, um, and that's, a, that's a big player in uh, deafness. If you don't have that cochlear amp amplifier, you will be deaf. So people without the Preston, they have an inner hair cell that works, but without the cochlear amplifier, they're deaf. Um, okay, so it's going to give you a, it, it's going to tell you whether the external ear is working, the middle ear is working, whether the cochlear duct through the, the, the sensory apparatus through the, the um, hair cell is working. It's not going to tell you whether the hair cell is synapsing correctly onto uh, the cranial nerve 8 neurons. In the next section, we're going to look now at inner hair cell signaling to the spiral uh, ganglion cells.